It's no coincidence that you're watching this video right now. God has some truths He wants to reveal to you. And through watching and receiving and hearing His voice, He will transform every part of your life. One of the things that I have found is that when it comes to people struggling with thoughts, thought patterns, internal stuff, if you want to call it oppressions, I guess you can call it that. A lot of that is that people try and get rid of the bad stuff. But most of the time, there's a misunderstanding because you can't get rid of something without exchanging it for something better. You go ahead. You go ahead. All right. Praise God. So um, you, can't, you, you, can't get, you can't just get good thoughts. Okay, so when you have a computer, you got software on it. If the software ain't working, you don't download better software without deleting the old software. But you can't fix old broken software if it's not compatible. You've got to download the good software first, see? And so what a lot of folk does is we think that we can change our thought life by simply getting better thoughts. Training ourselves to think better. No, 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 you can't. You need brand new thoughts. <laughs> and then you can press the delete button. Now, there's a reason why I'm saying it. So I'm going to read the scripture and then I'll re-explain. Matthew chapter 11. Let's start in verse 17. And saying, we have piped unto you and you have not danced. We have mourned unto you and you have not lamented. Verse 18, I'm going to read from the Amplified there. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. Now he's talking to the Pharisees, for those of you that don't understand. <clears throat> or obviously because of context, because we haven't read the whole thing yet. But verse 18, for John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. Remember, he was in the desert fasting, eating, you know, clothed with camels, hay, eating locusts and wild honey. Great diet, Amen. Verse 19, the son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified and vindicated by her deeds. Verse 20, then he began to denounce the people in the cities in which most of the miracles were done. Because they did not repent. Now I want to explain something to you. Most folks don't understand what this word means. The word repent does not mean confession. I, I've seen it so many times. People come up, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. Three months later, what do they do? Same thing they did before. Why? Because they never repented. They only confessed. See, confession can help you go to repentance. And it also helps restore trust with people. In, in, in saying, well, I recognize I've done something wrong, so I'm sorry about it. But it doesn't change you. Repentance changes you. Confession doesn't change you. Repentance means, literally in the Greek, it means to change your mind. What does repentance mean? To change your mind. That's repentance. So what is repentance? Repentance is like the device that needs new software. You are the device and you need new software. You don't need updated software. You need changed software. You need a transformed software. You need brand new software. You understand? So that's what repentance is. So repentance is not something that's just, I, I feel guilty. Guilty doesn't change anything. In fact, guilty makes everything worse. A lot of folk that goes on to the confession spree, not that I'm, uh, uh, confession has a place. I always say this, you can ask my wife. If you messed up in private, confess in private. If you messed up in public, co confess in public. Otherwise, who's going to trust you? Amen? You understand what I'm saying? So, but, but the point of it is, is that it, it, it only helps with certain things. You still need the repentance. You need the change of mind. Now let's go. 
He says this, <clears throat> verse 20. Then he began to denounce the cities in which most of the miracles were done because they did not repent. The Amplified actually in brackets would say, and change their hearts and lives, is what the Amplified would say. Now go to verse 21. Woe, judgment is coming to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, cities of the Gentiles, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Okay, then it carries on and it says, their hearts would have been changed and they would have expressed sorrow and their sin and rebellion against God. Verse 22, nevertheless, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for, <clears throat> for Tyre and Sidon, in brackets it says the pagan cities, of the de in the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, are used to be exalted to heaven. You will be descended to Hades. For if the miracles done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. Verse 25. At that time, Jesus began to praise you, Father, the Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and revealed them to the infants. Now, this all leads to something. Okay, So this whole repentance thing that he's talking about leads to a story. So the reason I'm throwing it in, people's like, what is this about? This is this heavy repentance thing where he's like rebuking these cities that wouldn't receive him and receive the gospel that he bought. What is this repentance thing? It's all leading up to something, and I want to show you, and when you see it, it'll all make sense. Let's read on. Comment down below what God just revealed to you. Share this video with somebody that is in need to hear it as God is sharing with you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us. Verse 26. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. Verse 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knows the Son but the Father. Never, neither knows any man the Father save the Son, and he whomever the Father will reveal him. Verse 28. Now this is the important part. Now remember what we spoke about repentance. Repentance is change your mind. How many of you have had this experience? You drove in your vehicle and you either had a moment with the Lord or you put some worship music on and suddenly God spoke to you. Just in a moment. And in that moment, God speaks to you and often there will be tears or a feeling of relief or some kind of emotion that goes with it. But you'll have this experience and in the experience... It's like God speaks to you and you realize, I'm not alone, I'm not a failure, I'm not a victim, and God is on my side. What happened? You just repented. Because you realize that you've had thoughts about failure. You've had thoughts about being a victim. You've had been entertaining those thoughts that was not what God has been saying or the word of God has been saying. And suddenly in a moment, when you turned your eyes on Jesus, in a moment, you changed your mind. No, no, but God spoke to me. Yeah, it's called repentance. <laughs> you just exchanged one set of thoughts that was not God for a set of thoughts that is God. Yeah, but the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I agree the Holy Spirit spoke to you, but that led you to repentance. Amen? That's what repentance is. Now, of course, it can be, you know, sometimes it's necessary that people have a deeper experience because if they don't, they just stay where they are. Sometimes when there's an altar call and people come forward and they have a deep experience, you, you understand, it, it, they fall on the ground and they lay there. Well, but that... That had nothing to do with their thoughts. How do you know God's not speaking to them? What do you think God's doing there? Nothing? You understand what I'm saying? That's repentance. That's what repentance is. That's what it's all about. Well, now I was reading Bible in church or I was reading Bible at home. And then suddenly I had this revelation. See, sometimes revelation is just knowledge. But sometimes revelation through the word is actually repentance. 
Sometimes it's just a deeper knowledge, a deeper understanding. It's just a deeper relationship. But many times it is repentance. It's something that comes in and changes your mind. Amen? So, and people's like, well, I don't understand. Like, no, no, no. It, 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 whenever God had deal with Israel before a blessing could be poured out, guess what happened? They had to repent. And I know that often it was sackcloth and ashes and it was fasting and all that kind of stuff. We're going to get to that in a second. Verse 28. Come unto me. Remember, this is the same story. This is the same parable. It's the same Jesus speaking. We continue reading right now. Verse 28. Don't lose sight of that. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened. The King James would say heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. So what's the repentance? The repentance is from bearing a burden to giving the burden to Jesus. Now, it doesn't mean there is no burden. He says... Because let's read on. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So what is the burden? It's another set of thoughts. But it's a lighter one. It's not a heavy one. It's not one that presses you down and keeps you bound up. Because he just said, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. In other words, it's not that there ain't no yoke. It's that it's a totally different yoke. You know what you do with a yoke? You put it on a donkey or on cattle. You'll see a lot of that stuff in India and Africa. In the olden days when the pioneers used to plow, they had all that stuff. And they put it on this animal, on the shoulders of the animal. And you know what you do with it? You steer, you use that thing to steer them. In other words, the yoke you have on you determines where you'll be going. I thought, well, I thought it's for pulling a weight. No, 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 no. Without that yoke, that cow or that ox or that donkey isn't going in the right direction. It'll just be going wild and without direction. But if it's got that yoke upon it, it'll go in the right direction. See, there's a, there's a certain yoke that'll send you in the wrong direction, which is why you'll be heavy and have a burden on you, where the other one is different.